yes uncle okay <clears throat> sunday before last we have seen the first miracle our lord jesus performed today we are going to see another miracle which is again very well known uh, those who are studied in the sunday school they studied this miracle also the man who was at badasta pool for 38 long years jesus healed him so we will initially read this portion john's gospel chapter 5 1 to 14 1 to 15 so the rajesh can read john's gospel chapter 5 1 to 15 okay bhaiya in baaton ke pashchat yahudiyon ka ek parv hua aur yeshu jerusalem ko gaya jerusalem mein bhed phatak ke paas ek kund hai jo ibrani bhasha mein betsadah kehlata hai uske panch usare hain इनमें बहुत से बीमार अंधे लंगड़े और सूखे अंग वाले पानी के हिलने की आशा में पड़े रहते थे क्योंकि नियुक्त समय पर परमेश्वर के स्वरदूत कुंड में उतरकर पानी को हिलाया करते थे पानी हिलते ही जो कोई पहले उतरता वह चंगा हो जाता था चाहे उसकी कोई भी बीमारी क्यों ना हो वह एक मनुष्य था जो अड़तीस वर्ष से बीमारी में पड़ा था यशु ने उसे पड़ा हुआ देखकर और यह जानकर की वह बहुत दिनों से इस दशा में पड़ा है उससे पूछा क्या तू चंगा होना चाहता है उस बीमार ने उसको उत्तर दिया हे प्रभु मेरे पास कोई मनुष्य नहीं कि जब पानी हिलाया जाए तो मुझे कुंड में उतारे परंतु मेरे पहुंचते पहुंचते दूसरा मुझसे पहले उतर जाता है यीशु ने उससे कहा उठ अपनी खाट उठा और चल फिर वह मनुष्य तुरंत चंगा हो गया और अपनी खाट उठाकर चलने फिरने लगा वह सब का दिन था इसलिए यहूदी उससे जो चंगा हुआ था कहने लगे आज तो सबद का दिन है तुझे खाट उठाना उचित नहीं उसने उन्हें उत्तर दिया जिसने मुझे चंगा किया उसी ने मुझसे कहा अपनी खाट उठा और चल फिर उन्होंने उससे पूछा वह कौन मनुष्य है जिसने तुझसे कहा खाट उठा और चल फिर परंतु जो चंगा हो गया था वह नहीं जानता था कि वह कौन है क्योंकि उस जगह में भीड़ होने के कारण येचु वहां से हट गया था इन बातों के बाद यीशु वह यीशु को मंदिर में मिला यीशु ने उससे कहा देख तू चंगा हो गया है फिर से पाप मत करना ऐसा ना हो कि इससे कोई भारी विपत्ति तुझ पर आ पड़े उस मनुष्य ने जाकर यहूदियों से कह दिया कि जिसने मुझे चंगा किया वह यीशु है मैं पहले एक सवाल पूछना चाहता हूं ये आदमी का उम्र कितना होगा how old this man was approximately once i try to find out approximately how old he was when the lord jesus met him and healed him lagbhag 40 ya usse upar wo bahut kam ho gaya lagta hai do saal umar mein itna bhayankar baap karke इतना भयंकर दंड विपत्ति उसमें आना अशक्य है ले कम से कम बीस साल उम्र में कुछ भयंकर पाप किए वेन ही वॉज एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी इयर्स ही कमिटेड सम ग्रीवियस सिन एस अ रिजल्ट दिस फिजिकल कंडीशन केम टू हिज लाइफ so at least he was some 60 years almost approximately because a child's disobedience and rebellion uh, cannot cause this kind of terrible punishment from god so as an young man he committed uh, some serious sin and as a result this Uh, sickness happen secondly we need to know what the bible says about sicknesses here 514 the lord says afterward jesus found him in the temple said to him see you have been made well 
sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you so sickness because of sin sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you sickness can come to the life of people as a result of sin's punishment god is a righteous god god is seeing what is happening in the world so the bible is saying sin can invite sickness in your life when we go to john's gospel chapter 9 when jesus was about to heal a blind man the people asked uh, who sinned he sinned or his parents sinned why he is born blind that was the question they asked jesus answered there neither he nor his father parents sin but the work of god should be revealed so sometimes sickness or uh, problems can come to our life so that god's work can be revealed in that case uh it is not because of parents sin or uh, his own sin he became blind that day jesus had to reveal his power that he can heal a blind man so that is the second reason for sicknesses god's work is to be revealed god's power should be revealed so sometimes certain sickness will be allowed to experience the power of god the strength of god third in uh, lazarus death uh, sickness jesus said this is this sickness is for the glory of god so some sicknesses are for the glory of god so that is another reason for sickness then first corinthians chapter 11 the corinthian believers some of them became weak some became became sick some died because with unholy life they have participated from the lord's table so that was a punishment god gave because they lived a unholy life and uh, participated in the lord's table then we read about uh, gehasi uh, El- elisha's servant he became a leper not only he became a leper his children also became leper. generations became lepers so that speaks you go against the will of god you speak uh, lies and you become covetous that can bring sickness and other problems other complication not only to your life the generation to come that's why we have to live very carefully sometimes the punishment or sickness something it can affect not only our life if it is limited to our life it is okay it is not okay but you are going to invite problems for your children and grandchildren and their children how sad it is that is what happened in the life of gagasi so that is another reason for sickness then we read in second corinthians 12 about apostle paul's sickness it was a uh, angel of satan who was constantly troubling him we have more clarity on that from the life of job why job had sickness why job had problems is all because satan wanted to trouble him destroy him so there are various reasons in the scripture 
for sickness. So don't say about a particular sickness of a person that you know the reason. Better to say, I don't know. Better to say. Any of these reasons can be there for that particular problem, particular sickness that we need to understand. Before I get into this uh, uh, miracle, uh, three wrong teachings of the charismatics. What are the three wrong teachings? All sickness is of the devil. So we have seen various reasons for sickness. What do they teach? All sickness is from the devil. No, it is not. Some sickness are. Okay, that is number one. One mistake they make. Secondly, all sickness can be healed today. That is another wrong teaching. Now, Paul had his problem, his sickness, continuously there in his life. He has been given the grace and the strength of God to live with his sickness. We see many believers like that even today in the world. They have uh, various problems, but they have uh, received enough grace from God to continue with their sickness. That is again important. So all sickness will not be healed here. We will have a permanent solution only when we live in this world. Okay, that is the second wrong teaching. All sickness can be healed today. No. Third, Jesus died on the cross for our sickness also. They will quote Isaiah chapter 53. There is a verse. He was Jewish for our sicknesses. He carried our sickness. What sickness? They didn't read Isaiah chapter 1 properly. Without reading that, they went to Isaiah 53. Before coming to such conclusion that Jesus died on the cross for our sicknesses also, those people should read Isaiah chapter 1. There it is speaking about spiritual sickness. Various sicknesses of sin in the life of people. So, these three teachings are uh, completely wrong. Now, we will get into this story. The first point is the consequences of sin. Verse 14. Why this man became sick? Here it is clear. The Lord Jesus says, Sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. So why this thing happened to him? Because of his sin. He said, you be careful in the future, lest a worse thing happen to you. So the consequence of sin. No man can escape without receiving the punishment if he knowingly commits sin. Be careful. We have ample examples in the Bible. Adam and Eve, they brought all the problems into this world by committing sin. Then we read about Moses. Moses became angry and he smote the rock. A man like Moses, when he was about to enter into the promised land, God stopped him. He said, there at Meribah, you rebelled. You became angry. So you cannot enter into the promised land. Think about David, a man who wrote this wonderful Psalms. He sinned. What happened? The, the prophet said, the sword will not depart from your home. 
there after we know his four sons died one after another not one four sons died the consequence of sin whether in the old testament or new testament when people sinned they invited god's judgment we know about uh, ananias and sapphira they tried to become hypocritical hypocrisy they wanted to show something which was not the actual thing what happened they thought they can escape they will have the reputation and you know acceptance and commendation from god's people they may believe these lies which they were speaking these are areas we have to be maximum careful satan can tempt us satan can fool us let us be very truthful very straight forward very very down uh, plain don't get into satan's deceitfulness he can deceive us very easily so in the old testament again we can think about abraham such a great man the founder of israel when he went against god's will how god punished him we know so what i want to say the consequence of sin so believers have to be careful let me remind another statement a great servant of god made god is more disturbed by the sins of saints than the sins of sinners i hope you heard it properly god is more disturbed by the sins of saints than the sins of sinners as believers we have to be very very careful every day every second we have to be careful we have to be truthful and we should uh, understand that we are living in a world satan can tempt us satan can fool us and sometimes our own smartness and our own crookedness we can get into trouble so don't it my invite unnecessarily god's judgment god's punishment don't invite extra sicknesses already we live in this world uh, we will see that uh, in the next point we live in this world and uh, we have to go through various problems in addition to that don't invite more punishment more problems in our life we have to be careful so point number 1 the consequences of sin that is point number 1 second we see here this man was there 38 long years was why now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years 38 years of suffering we have a few days of suffering some temperature one some vomiting and uh, uh, some body ache and uh, some uncomfortableness we know how difficult and hard it is a look at this man 38 long years he is in a place he is with a great number of people they all have their own problems what kind of people they were was three blind lame paralyzed this is a big picture of the world what is this world we see this kind of people in the world especially if you go to a a uh, uh, government hospital you can see the sad situation there those who live in ahmedabad they can go to that civil hospital and see 
what all kinds of problems people have. Now every uh, speciality section, long line you can see. Whether it is uh, problems related to heart or uh, 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 brain or uh, any other part of the body or uh, uh, children's uh, sickness and you go to any special ward uh, there you can see the number of people. Few occasions I had been there, people are lying on the floor. People are uh, lying on the, in the veranda. Inside there is no room, no space. So indeed this world is a place of suffering. Here 38 long years, this man was there. <coughs> We need to know, as believers, why we go through sicknesses. Reason number one, we live in this body, in this world, in this body. When Corona started, many believers were, you know, teaching or saying, no plague can come near to your tent. This is a quotation from Psalm 90. No evil can come near to your dwelling place. People are quoting. It is just like, you know, when uh, Corona was spreading in India, people were taking some vessels and making some noise and uh, thinking that Corona will go by that sound. That also, you know, the sad thing is uh, the leader of the country is, uh, you know, telling people to do this chase of Corona by this sound, Corona will go away. Then there failed, you know, then they said, you lit the lamps. And uh, people were, you know, uh, litting the lamp. Sometimes they were uh, uh, showing the torch, something like that. And uh, they thought, you know, Corona will go away by this. And uh, how people are being fooled. There are superstition in other religions. There can be superstitions in our religion also. Be careful about that. So as long as we are here in this world, we are as long as we are here in this body, we are susceptible to sickness. Sickness can come to our life. So that is reason number one why the believers become sick. Secondly, of course, Satan is against us. In the case of Job and Paul, there are very clear indications that what all wrong, what all problems happen in their life, it was caused by Satan. He was behind it. That is reason number two. Third, if we break a natural laws, we will become sick. Our body has to obey certain natural laws. You cannot jump from the top of a building and uh, go unhurt. So the gravitation pulling is there. Then in the extreme uh, winter time, you cannot uh, go without uh, having proper warm clothes. You need warm clothes. And uh, uh, you need uh, proper food. Then only this body can survive. You live in this body. This is unredeemed. So by breaking natural laws, we can become sick. Fourthly, by breaking spiritual laws, that is what we have seen in Second Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 11, by breaking spiritual laws, so in all these areas, people have to be careful. What is what? Why this particular thing happened? A believer should examine his life and find out. So this man became sick. 
38 years sickness because of some sin and uh, he was lying there uh, in a very helpless and hopeless condition how sad his condition was that we will uh, see later so the condition of the man 38 years of suffering we who suffered for few days we know uh, how difficult it is to adjust with such kind of situations and how much we have to praise god for giving us good help if god has kept us safe in this world day by day moment by moment how much we should be grateful to the lord the world filled with sicknesses and problems god is taking care of us god is helping us god is delivering us from various problems even when there is problems god heals us god hears our prayers god comes for our rescue so we have such a wonderful god okay that is the second thing third thing the compassionate christ came verse 7 verse 6 when jesus saw him lying there he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time he said to him do you want to be made well jesus saw him there were lot of people but somehow jesus eyes went to this man jesus saw him secondly he knew for the last so many years this man is in this hopeless and helpless condition he knew then he spoke to him asked a question whether he is willing to be healed or not so what does it indicate we have a savior who is able to see us and able to know he knows what are our problems all the details others may not understand others may not know it there no need for others to know there is one person who can understand it, see, see it and he can help when god was calling moses to go to uh, egypt and deliver god's people you know in uh, exodus chapter 2 and 3 what did god say to him i have seen the problems of my people i have heard their cry i have come down to rescue them so it should uh, greatly encourage us we have a god who is able to see us as we are people cannot see as completely what is inside our heart what is our problem the mental pressure what's going through our inner being others cannot see secondly the lord knew the details such a long time so if some problems are in your life if it is there for a long time all the details the lord understands nobody had to tell him he knew that this man is in this bad condition for a such a long years he understood then he was willing to speak to him you know this man after was said i have no man nobody was there to hear him but here the lord jesus was there the compassionate christ came to him the brothers and sisters worldly people also will have problem we also will have problem 
but there is a major difference what is that they have no one to help them in their problem but we have such a wonderful god who can help us in our problem this is something every believer should understand and uh, the lord is there to take care of us the lord is able to see us the lord is there to understand the 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 greatness of our problem others may not understand all the details how big is our problem people may not understand but the lord knows so that's a very encouraging thing we can go to him and the throne of grace is open for us 24 into 7 we can go at any time and we have a great compassionate high priest who is able to help us in our uh, problems so the lord jesus came there compassionate christ came that is the third thing then we see the confession of this man when jesus asked him you want to be healed uh, he was not uh, saying yes or no instead of that he was telling his experience the sick man answered him verse seven sir i have no man to put me into the pool and the water is stirred but while i am coming another steps down before me so the the confession of this man what did he understand all this 38 years there i have no man you now sometimes the lord will bring us to such kind of situation he may break all our leaning on people so that you may lean on him you may trust him i have no man no one to take care of me nobody is able to understand me properly nobody is there to stand with me nobody is there to help me in this difficult situation sometimes we may go through such kind of experience in that lonely time lonely moments the lord jesus coming close says you have no man i understand but i am here for you that is what the lord wants to tell us so here is a confession from experience 38 long years what did he learn he understood that there is no proper human being who is really concerned about him in the book of judges we read again and again when there was no king in israel every man did what was right in his own eyes people are concerned about uh, themselves occupied with themselves they think only about themselves no thought about others so that this man learned so he said to the lord i have no man i have nobody in this world then uh, we see the fifth thing the command of christ the lord jesus verse eight said to him rise take up your bed and walk the command of christ no he could have said i cannot take up the bed and walk i am a paralyzed man i am physically so weak i cannot do anything by myself he could have said but you know when the lord says take up your bed he will give the strength also to do that he suddenly received help strength and uh, he could uh, take up the bed and walk 
so the power of jesus words his words are powerful when he says something it happens that is one of the uh, wonderful things we learn in the gospels whenever jesus spoke something it happened like that his words are powerful and even today his words are powerful you know that uh, centurion who came to jesus for his servant he said you speak a word i am a man under authority when i say to my servant go he goes when i tell him to come he comes you just uh, say a word there is no need for you to go there to reach there to be present there you say a word from here it will happen now jesus commanded about him and he said i have in seen such a great faith in israel so what do we understand the words of jesus are powerful we have a powerful god his words are powerful and he can command and things can happen so we should be prepared to believe that the power of jesus words he commands and things will happen so command of christ then we see sixthly the complete healing of this man so here and in other healings we need to understand few things today you know there are so many healers uh they just ignore the healing which happened in jesus time and his disciples time here this healing it was not a functional disease it was organic what does it means function functioning diseases are you may have you know sometimes headache or back ache stomach pain or you know you are uh, sneezing these are all functional diseases it may be there for some time it can disappear morning your leg will be terribly paining after one or two hours that pain disappears jesus was not healing functional diseases he healed the organic diseases which was affected on the organs blind is healed dumb is made to speak the deaf is made to hear raised the dead the withered hand man his hand became normal so any disease which jesus healed it was something which affected a man's organs so organic disease so that is number 1 today you know what all kinds of healings are take happening in the world people will say that you know my leg was paining for 10 days suddenly when the pastor prayed you know i am not saying that you should not pray for uh, uh, minor problems also that also we need the help of god grace of god but this uh, healer so called healers generally their healing is this kind of functional diseases i could have, if i had time i would have quoted you know many incidents which happened in ahmedabad i was personally present there this so called healers came from abroad and what the, they were doing there okay secondly when we look at this uh, healing this was instant immediately it happened there was no need of any uh, time 
instantly it happened immediately it happened it was not something gradual today you are healed for uh, uh, some 20 percent after a few days you know again some 25 30 percent no it's not like that it was instantly healed thirdly it was complete it was complete healing he was able to rise up and he could uh, carry his bed and he could walk it was complete healing fourth it was permanent was it permanent jesus met him afterwards verse 14 afterward jesus found him in the temple so it was a permanent healing then uh, again it was god glorifying <clears throat> verse 15 the man departed and told the jews that it was jesus who had made him well god glorifying then he was available to witness this man was available to witness he went and told the jews yes i am healed by the lord jesus christ he was witness so this is the scriptural healing you need to understand instead of that what is happening in the world today when uh, all these healers also, when they go through some problems, they will go to the best hospital in the world. They don't mind going to America and, uh, you know, uh, receiving the uh, treatment available there. They may hide it from other people also. When their problem is there, they, instead of trusting in the Lord, they uh, trust in the doctors. Okay, I'll leave it there. Then the last thing, what we see here, verse 14. Cautioning. The Lord gave him a word of caution. What is that? Sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. The Lord did not say, uh, after all, you live in this world. Uh, <laughs> Be careful. No, it is not like that. He said, sin no more. Don't sin again. That is something the Lord wants to tell his children. All those who are born again. Those who know the Lord Jesus Christ. When we live in this world, there are various situations in life. There is possibility for us to uh, commit sin if we are not careful and prayerful. There is possibility. But let us be very wise. Be careful. Very prayerful every day in our life. So the Lord gave him a word of caution. A similar warning or caution was given to the woman who was caught and brought to the Lord Jesus. And uh, finally the Lord said, I also don't condemn. You go in peace. Then the Lord said, sin no more. So the Lord wants to tell his children, you lived a uh, until today, made mistakes, committed some sin, but be careful, very careful, so that you may sin no more. If you sin, what will happen? Here the Bible is clear, the Lord is very clear. A worse thing can happen. So we have to be extremely careful. Believers have to be careful. So what we have seen in the beginning consequence of sin. 
here the lord jesus is cautioning him be careful in the future i have shown mercy i have shown grace i have healed you you received such a great blessing but be careful in the future so as believers let us be very very careful when we live in this world so far we could come the lord has helped us and even we need the help of god the blessing of god the protection of god the days to come also every day every moment let us trust in the lord be very prayerful very careful we as we live in this world so that we can be free from unnecessary punishment otherwise come to our life may the lord bless this world